Hi there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Uh, first thing, uh, I'm going to be breaking this video up, going to be trying smaller videos. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to cover today uh, was actually, I'm surprised so many people responded to it. I did a community post for something that was sort of bugging me. Um, was a general sentiment um, against the people that I play with that spend money on Warframes. And apparently the sentiment's pretty universal. Regarding the new Baruch Prime Access, I really don't spend money on Warframe outside of... Pardon. the per Personally, I don't spend money on Warframe outside of the Prime Access. In order to get my boosters, in order to get plat, when a new Prime Frame comes out, I will buy the Prime Access. And then obviously refarm everything, because... Why not, right? Um, but obviously the Prime Accessories. I'm not a huge fashion junkie. But in the issue of transparency, to be honest, I it would probably be easier for me to list the stuff that I don't have in the market. Like I have all of the deluxe skins except for Atlas. Because I am never going to buy that. It... I get the whole geode thing, but whatever. Um, but I posted a question, actually two questions yesterday. Uh, and the sentiment, I'm surprised it was so universal. And it was about what I th thought would come up. Um, I posted the question, comparing the coming Baruch Prime Access to past Prime Accesses, is the pack worth it and i gave up a couple of different potential responses obviously i can only list so many um the first one was i'm excited and waiting to spend my money second one was not as good as past accesses but i'll buy it anyways third one was not as good and i'm really considering not buying them now fourth one was i used to buy and this made me stop buying them obviously the most uh limited and niche response which still had people click on it. Uh, and the final one, which I figured would be the majority, uh, and it's I'm free to play, FTP, for those that didn't know. Nobody said they didn't um, know what it was. But this is a sentiment I've seen this issue, the first three. This is a sentiment I've noticed is growing, is that there is a growing resistance to spending money on Warframe. Obviously, Plat is pretty easy to come by. If you, if you really want to grind Plat, you can make some Plat, especially if you're an older player. It's really easy to make Plat four, five, six hundred Plat a day. Max out your trades. You're not going to do much else, but by selling uh, like basic grinding. Um, you sell syndicate mods, um, would at least, like, at least give you like 100 plat a day. That's 500 plat a week, 700 plat a week, that's 2,000 plat uh, a month, right? That is a hefty bonus, which would give you more than what the prime accessories give you, or the prime access would give you, right? So gaining that much plat in the time period of buying into the Prime Access is actually causing you to lose money if it, you are trading, playing the game and buying the Prime Access versus buying the Prime Accessories and farming everything out. You'll have the plat to buy it day one anyway, right? So is it becoming more of an issue with people of... a uh, are they being hesitant to spend money and because of how they are releasing stuff? Because the fact is, I get the Cobra and Came. It's Baruch's weapon, right? Um, but the Afuris seemed a little sketchy to me for the first time. Obviously, it's going to be at a minimum bare bones single weighting minimum benefit of MR. 
but they're clearly worried about like power creep with the new releases. It's a lot more single target. You're not seeing um, the AOE nukes, the Brahma, unless you have the mods or you're able to run a carrier, um, is really difficult to use nowadays. Now, I'm glad they're making the frames stronger. Varuna is sort of a testament to that. It's been a long time, essentially Saren or Wukong, since you had a frame that could regularly kill. Not saying they're the only ones, because obviously Volt, um, Equinox definitely have damage dealing abilities, but in terms of constant uh, spammable AoE clears, that scale all the way up to level cap and can scale. That's a limited number of frames where their abilities can scale all the way up to level cap enemies. And Varuna, because of the inherent ability of her two, just pick a dot and start nuking crap, right? Sorry, I had to take a drink of water. But you have the Afuris coming out. And the problem is, is obviously they can upgrade the regular of Furus. You have the, the Mark I, or the, the Dual Furus, uh, the Dex Furus, and I guess we're getting a, prime Fur uh, a primed of Furus, right? Um, so there's plenty of a Furus variants. Um, the one thing I would actually be kind of interested to see is if they said the Afuris is being released. Obviously, that's the dual pistol variant. Does that also mean the primed single pistol variant is being released also? Are we going to have to level it twice? Because if it is, that's going to be a nasty grind as far as, like, weapons go, right? In terms of collecting parts. It's been a while since we've seen something like that, where you have to get the regular pistol and it's the prime. Then you have to farm the other prime pistol, level one, then you have to combine them to get the Prime to Furus. It could be a bit of grind, especially when relics get involved. So I'd be interested to see that. I haven't um, seen that mentioned. But you have, like, the Akvasto Prime, right? So it could be suspect. They haven't announced that yet. But... Um, it's just seeing this, I can't see them upgrading it more than the Dex Furus. Maybe changing the Dispo, buffing the crit a little bit, but it's not. It, there's no way for it to be a massive upgrade over the Dex Furus. Because the Dex Furus can do Steel Path now. It's very bullet hosey. I like it, like it's a different pace for pistols, but in terms of like comparing it to say like the Oxtaletto, um, what's the other one? Let's check equipment. I'm drawing a blank. Okay, so we have the Dex Furus, the Furus, the Mark I Furus, and the A Furus, and we're getting an A Furus Prime. So does that mean we're gonna have to do Furus Prime as well? Because that's a different type of grind, because you're going to have to build this up, wait for it to build, build a second one right after, level one, then build the Afuris, sacrifice both of them, and farm apart for this. So, I guess depending on the relics, and how it's structured, maybe it'd be an easier farm but if this is like a dirty reward pool it can be really annoying for new players obviously i will be able to grind it out that's not an issue but like the dex furus i've already got a ribbon for it but am i going to need to re-roll it i don't know but try it out a meme build through eight forma into it and it does steel path right like Tons of raw damage, but I just can't see it being a huge upgrade over this. So the only place that they have to upgrade this would be crit chance and maybe crit multiplier. 28% status chance isn't bad. Maybe innate multi-shot. 
It's not like they're going to boost the magazine anymore. The magazine on the deck Spheris is already 100. So... The thing I was worried about is that the upgrades to the new weapons, right? They're not going to power creep them. And to be honest, if they stuck power creep, like the power creep weapons stay core to farmable or quest items. Like, I don't think anybody had an issue with the Nadaruk being as strong as it was. The Kuva weapons. Um, everybody was okay with them being as strong as they were because you had to farm them. Somebody had to farm that. You couldn't spend money and get that unless you bought a lich, but then you had to go kill the lich. You couldn't just swipe and buy power. You, you could buy a proper roll. You could buy a roll and then be on your way and skip some grind, but you still had to grind for it. And prime weapons have always had sort of like a lore-based reasoning where they were supposed to be super powerful, but I can't remember the last time like a prime weapon was like the go-to. Like, unironically, I think the Nakana Prime has been the most meta-breaking weapon. Like, it, it's the granddaddy of Slash. Right? Like, that's... I even made a video on it. Um, then you have, like, the Cronin Prime. Um, and for Eidolons, the Vectus Prime was the king for a long time. It replaced the Lanka and the Snipatron. Um, and then, right now, you're using the Nell Prime, I think is still the meta Eidolon killing weapon. Um, but the Rubico, because of, like, the Arcanes is now usable over the Vectus, and because of the, the zoom multiplier, is a better choice in a lot of instances because of how Rivens roll. So there's a lot to consider, but it's just, when I was looking at the Ephurus, I it's the first time I've looked at a, a Prime Accessories, and I'm like, wow, that could potentially be garbage. Not saying it's going to be, but like just looking at it, I'm like the Afuris, like they there's nothing from Fortuna you can give Baruch. Like lore wise, there's no reason why Baruch has to have the Afuris. Like you, you can't have like like even like a Galaxian Va Prime would make at least more sense, because at least it's cold-related and corpus-related. But it's just, it, the, the Afuris Prime was probably one of the few, the, I think it's literally the first time in years I've looked at something and I'm like, wow, that's useless. Like, I'm going to level that Prime weapon, um, and if you guys want to build for it, I'll make a build video. But, oh, the, uh, the weapons I was going to compare it to. You have the Axtoletto... And the Axamati, which are solid sidearms. The Akbolto. Like, there's a lot of prime secondaries. But how many of them are meta? Like, literally the most useful one here, and I'm not even joking because of the raw damage buff, is because of the mod... I don't even know how to pronounce this, but the Deimos mod for the Ak Bronco. It allows you to run Viral Corrosive Heat, which is a monster combination. And even then, it's not crit-based. So it's just... I wanted to get everybody's feedback, and I didn't really know how invasive these would be. And I'm really surprised 118 people voted on it. But... I don't know, like, this is, I guess, like, an open question. Um, has Baruch Prime, if the trend continues, I still think Baruch Prime access is worth it, depending on the accessories. But I'm also worried because of how Korra's Prime accessories was, where they just kind of weren't that good.
like you had a Cyandana. Like it didn't even have an armor set associated with it. But you had Venari Prime. Cool. Um but it didn't have accessories. Harrow Prime had sick accessories. I used that Cyandana a bit. Um I think it's on my Equinox right now. But if the trend continues, the prime release after Baruch, do you think it'll have finally jumped the shark? Because the, the trend has been that the prime access has been getting slowly worse. But we're coming up on, like, Wisp. There's no way they're going to fuck up Wisp. You get, like, a Fulman Prime... Um, obviously, ass prime. Like, there's no way they're gonna mess it up. Like, they they wouldn't even have to buff Wisp. Like, they just give her a little bit more energy, and everybody would lose their shit over it, right? Like, you just don't need much to make that frame work, and the community loves the frame. Um, and the Fulman Prime, if it keeps its forced impact on alt fire, it's almost instantly a god tier gun. It's like a little bit more magazine. That's more shots on the alt fire, considering how many it consumes. It's instantly a god tier gun. Because the Fulman already, because of the forced impact in the hemorrhage mods, or the impact to slash, um, is already a late game gun. And god forbid they actually buff the ammo recharge on it, right? So. I'm kind of worried because, like, I don't mind, and I don't mind spending money on Warframe because this is really the only game I play. Any other game I play is sort of like a passing fad. Um, like, I did Lost Ark for a bit, but I came back to Warframe. If the trend continues, do you guys think uh, that maybe the Prime Access thing has jumped the shark? So, normally I try to be, like, super educational, or like explain like an interaction, but it's just I did the community post, um, and I'm honestly kind of surprised. Obviously, the free to play I knew that would be the top one. It's the reason why I put it there so everybody could post that there and sort of like voice their opinion. Like, oh, Warframe is something I can't afford. I'm never going to pay money. Just throw it into free to play. That's cool. But if you look at the ones that matter for people that have spent money on Warframe, uh, which is literally the lifeblood of it, selling skins. Um, a lot more people than I thought were on the edge. And to be honest, I kind of want to ask more questions to uh, really narrow it down. But for, for what it is, uh, thank you guys for voting. This is just like a small little recap, even though I went like 18 minutes, right? Um, but yeah, no, I think this is their most questionable release to date. Um, the only way I could see the Afuris Prime being saved uh, is honestly if it gets to like orange crits and has like a unique interaction. Because it used to be the Primes weren't just straight upgrades, right? Um, like, you have the Ballistica Prime, where with the charge shots, you can make the little clones. Um, you have the... What is it? The Piranha Prime, with the second one that appears. There used to be, like, kind of a gimmick. And then you had, like, the Aximati and the Axtaletto, which is, like, status and crit, where they're just solid weapons to begin with. But let me know what you guys think. Um, this is just going to be sort of a general, what do you guys think? And I'm going to make another video about like corrosive in a bit. So thank you for listening, guys. Have a blessed day. Got another video coming up.